You know how you always feel sort of immature, in, inwardly immature? And all your life, you always feel maybe a little bit like you haven't quite grown up yet. And then it all changes one day when you get a headboard for your bed. Because something about having a headboard takes you from being a student-type itinerant drifter to being a real solid, mature adult. And today, I have reached that stage. Yes, indeed, because look what I made. Okay, it takes about a day to make, but that's not bad for a whole big honking headboard. It's plywood covered in tin. I ordered a whole bunch of this stuff and I painted it and I put it on plywood and that's what it looks like. Now you can use it on your ceiling if you wanted to do a whole uh, hallway or a bathroom or a kitchen with tin. That's what they used to do because in the old days the stove would always catch fire in the kitchen so they'd put tin ceilings in their kitchens just to stop a fire and it worked. It was really cool. Th this would be just like you would have in a room, right? The panels, the molding, and then the crown molding, this stuff that goes around the edges of a room. So after I show you how to do this, you could even do the ceiling of your bedroom to match your headboard. It would be unbelievable. You'd be so mature. huh? All right, so when you first get the tin, it looks like this, it's silver. It's very soft, see? You can really work with it easily. And you can also cut yourself, so you have to be careful. And then, if you want to paint it, it's much easier to paint the tin before you build the whole bed, because, and then you can just touch it up if you scratch it. So you get the tin looking like this, then you prime it with a water-based uh, primer that's that says on the can that it's good for non-porous surfaces, which this is. It goes okay, you still scratch it a bit, but that's okay. So it looks like this. And then I used um, milk paint on top of the primer. And milk paint's fun to use because it's non-toxic and it makes these lovely matte colors. But that looked a little bit boring to me. So to perk it up a little bit, what you want to do is, See, this, is, this one turned out really cool. I dragged my paintbrush across and the darker paint pooled in the leeward side of these little islands. You gotta think of them as islands, okay? It'll help you because then you get a real three-dimensional effect with these dark spots. Then you come across with yellow paint that looks kind of like sunlight and you just crest it across the windward side of these little humps or islands as I will now refer to them. And then that just gives you a way more like cool thing happening than this flat thing. And I'll show you how to do this. With this one, there's a lot of leewards and windwards as they say in the Navy. All right, you don't know how to approach this. So what you do is you bring the paint down from one corner as if the sunlight were coming across in one direction. And then that gives you a really cool look like this. This milk paint's great, by the way, but you can't keep it long, so you never should mix up more than you can use. So it starts to smell like ammonia, and that will never go away. So you have to store it in the fridge, too. OK, so pretend the sun's coming this way. So I'll just. I got a little bit too much paint on my brush. Hold on. Like this. So it all comes in the same direction. And then it, it gives you this odd sensation like sun streaming in, especially on those high spots. See? Cool. OK, so I'm going to paint all the stuff so that it has this sun streaming on it effect in the islands kind of look, which is going to be really cool, I promise. And then I'll be ready to build the frame for the bed. And then I'll even show you how to attach it to your bed frame. OK, I am laying out the tin now. I finished painting it. And as a sign of my newfound maturity, I have not soiled my hands with paint, which is a completely record type accomplishment. So these are my special tin snips. Now there are two kinds of tin snips. They're the kind with a little narrow beak on them that are slightly curved and they're good for turning corners when you're cutting. But I need a straight cut so I pick the ones with the big flat beak. But look at this. You can put the ha bottom handle, let it rest on the on the surface that you're cutting on and look. Cool, eh? So you don't actually have to hurt yourself. I love that. I don't know if they made them that way on purpose or if it's just some weird quirk of fate that I've discovered this all on my own, but I doubt it. 
So I'm cutting this up because the headboard I'm making to, is, to, is for a single bed that matches that bed. Well, it doesn't really match it because I'm using different tin. Okay, so this cutting now accomplished. I'm gonna put this piece aside. And you just wanna know two things about the bed that you're working on. You need to go underneath it and measure the distance between the two corners of the frame at the head of the bed. Most bed frames, if not all, have little slots that are meant to hold bolts so that if you ever wanted to attach a headboard, you could. So you have to look for those slots and find out how far apart they are. And then you need to uh, know a total overall measurement of the bed as it sits, you know, the whole outside measurement. And the reason for that is the next thing you have to do is cut a piece of plywood to fit. Oh, just I just had this thing stuck in here. You cut a piece of plywood. Oh. Whoa! <laughs> you cut a piece of plywood to fit the measurement. And how high do you want to go? Well, you can decide. You can get a really gothic looking, you know, six foot tall headboard on a little wee tw twin bed, or you can do something a little bit more mature, I think is the theme we're going for here. So what I've done is cut a four foot high piece of plywood, which is very heavy. It's just half inch plywood, but the weight adds up. And then these are two two by fours that are cut exactly the same height. And those two by fours are, are there because that's what we're gonna bolt through. If this were the bottom, the the it, the frame would be right about here. So we need those things to bolt through. Because if you just use the plywood to bolt through, it's going to be really flimsy. So these stiffen it all up. Now, to attach the crown molding, you need a a shelf that comes out because it you need something up here to catch the crown molding. So you cut a piece of board. This is p um, pine because I'm going to leave it clear on top. So I just need to attach that here. Oh, no, wait, I've got it all backwards. Here. So you, you don't want to look at the back. You want to see how it's going to look at the front. So I'm going to attach this board across the top like this so it sticks out and catches the crown molding. Only thing is, just nailing it here and here isn't very good. So to give it extra strength, because you'll probably end up piling books on it, you want to put this strip across. This is just a piece of two by two. So it's cut to fit in between the two by fours. Okay, so that's it. That's your whole bed frame. Now we get to cover it with tin. So I'm gonna attach this, um, this piece, the little, um, the strip. I'll show you the back again. I'm gonna attach that piece with glue and screws and then set the pine piece on top of it with little finish nails running along the back edge because I want it to look good. Because I'm mature. <laughs> Okay, the, the frame is finished. See, it's got its smart little shelf. And I've put one uh, triangular bracket at that end because that catches the sharp edge of the crown molding. Isn't that pretty? The sharp edge, you know you're horsing around on your bed or moving it. You don't want to grab and, and suddenly find that you've cut yourself, okay? It kind of ruins the moment. So what I'm thinking is I'll cover these with these little triangular bits and then there's nobody gets hurt, okay? So that closes it in, see? Only trick is with these little triangular bits, the crown molding is flexible because it's made of tin. So it tends to be a bit of a pain getting the measurement exactly right. You have to um, put the crown molding where you think you want it, hold it there, and then hold the block using the amazing stomach clamp, and then make your mark here and up here to show you. And then you have to cut that off um, and join the two points. It's just a bit of pain you might miss. miss mess up a bit of lumber. So I'm going to glue this in place and then it has to be screwed in from the back using really long screws because you don't want to just, that's not enough to just put little finish nails across the top. It has to be um, put in place with big honking nails, I mean screws, which are these. And these will go all the way through and you'll need your safety glasses because you're going to be working kind of over your head or right near your eyes anyway. Uh, okay, well, hmm, okay. Oh, oh, and I was gonna, 
I was gonna show you, look, I got this really cool clamp. They sell these 90 degree angle pieces. So look, it just slides into place like that and then it slaps on the bottom of the corner there. And then it, okay, wait, I'll catch that edge first. And then look, then I just oh, miss it completely. There, tighten it up. Ooh, I love that. Ooh, I love that. That is something to ask for for a special occasion right there. Yeah, I'll be uh, wanting that 90 degree cl clamp. You gotta say that. Okay, so that's good. The glue's sucking it in, so I'll screw it from behind, which is gonna be special. And then I'll also nail the, um, put a few finishing nails in there just to keep it all together. Okay. <laughs> Okay, I'm just tacking um, the, the crown molding in place now. And look, it's so soft that I can actually bend this lip up so that it makes a nice little edge for the, the counter, or the counter, the shelf on top here. That's why tin's so neat to work with. Right, so there, that, that's cool. And if you, if you find this edge a little bit too um, harsh, you can just take your pliers and round it over underneath. It's so soft which is really cool. And then you can just whack it one with a hammer to settle it down. <laughs> All right, now to do this tacking business, I'm using little baby escutcheon pins. They're, uh, they look like brass, but they're actually steel. And I think they've just got bronze powder on them or something, or they're brass plated. And they're so tiny that you have to actually hold them in your pliers up near the head like this. Then put them in place like this and get it started. It goes, it goes right through the tin and you can finish it, but don't put it right in because then you want to take a nail set which has a perfect dome shaped little um, ending on it and it just goes right over the little dome shaped escutcheon pin and sinks it right in. Cool, huh? Okay, now, if you don't have a single bed, if you're actually working with a very large bed for two people, um, what you need to do is overlap two pieces of crown molding because it only comes in four foot lengths, at least that's all I could get. So for the big bed here, you'll see there's a joint, and I had to do that, it's supported, look. See, this is pretty good on its own. It's not gonna go anywhere, it's, it's fine. But with a joint in the middle, it's gonna go whoopa whoopa. So what I did was I put a block in place before I finished putting uh, the two triangle pieces on the end. I put a block in place and just traced that profile and then cut it out with a jigsaw. And that way you just put it right under the center section where the two pieces overlap. Whenever you have an overlap like that, you should give it about half an inch overlap, you know, so that there's, there's some strength there. So that's how you do, do you handle it if you're making a big bed for two mature people. Okay, so now I'm going to lay out all this tin so that it looks nice and then I can put it in place. It has to be square before you start nailing it down or you find it starts going crooked and then you have to take the little nails out and it's annoying. All right, so remember you've got to put the sunlight See how it's all going the diagonal sweeps of the sunlight are going in the same direction. And uh, you gotta wonder what world I live in, huh? The sunlight cresting over the islands. It's just my way though, because I don't really like painting, which is why I always choose finishes that are sloppy as heck, because you can't really screw them up, right? I mean, it looks cool, but there's not much to it, is there? So I took a hammer and banged down the ends of these, and that's because You've gotta be conscious of those sharp edges. You wanna bury them as often as possible. So I would take that and cover it like this. But because of the profile on this molding, you do have to hammer the ends down. Noisy stuff. Because of the profile, you do have to hammer it down flat to fit underneath another piece. So this, this piece will go along here. And this stuff is called stipple. It's just made as filler if you've got 
But if you get to the edges of your, if you're doing, doing a ceiling, if you get to the edges and you're not quite ready for molding yet, but you don't want to use the expensive stuff, because this, these pieces and these pieces are a little bit more expensive, but still, these are only about 16 bucks for a big panel, a two foot by two foot panel. So it's definitely not that expensive to do a bed. So I'll square all this up and then I'll nail starting from the top down so that I can keep everything square. And then I'm going to um, put the, this molding on the edges too so that it's all trimmed out and looks very swish. All right, so starting up here. Um, looking pretty. The only place that you might find that you need extra little uh, pins or escutcheon pins is on the seams, especially between the panels. Um, they tend to be a bit loose and floppy, so that's going to, I'll tighten that up. Some people actually caulk the tin, meaning you go around with the caulking and, and make it all look really smooth. I like it a little bit funky and rustic so that it doesn't look just so perfect. Besides, with my messy painting technique, you don't even notice that there might be a problem with the tin because you're so busy being distracted by the paint. Speaking of paint, I need to go around and touch up all the little shiny, see where the, the escutcheon pins are? They look kind of shiny. And also I tended to ding up the tin a little bit so it's shiny too. So I'll just grab that with a, a paintbrush. But for now, I'm gonna put it on its side. Um, <laughs> you think this is awkward. You should have seen the big one. <laughs> Nothing to it. Okay, so now I want to put the edging on the side and, oh no, <laughs> look, I got some on me. <laughs> My maturity is slipping. I was doing so well. Okay, so we want, oh, that piece isn't painted very well. This piece will look better. So, want to go right along the edge like that. And then, because there's a little bit of extra, okay, so I've got half inch plywood, and I've got a two by four, which is actually one and three quarters. So what that means is I've got a little bit too much, so I'm just gonna have to bend that over like this. See how soft it is? I love this stuff. And that'll give me a nice tight edge. And then I'll attach these. I painted it a, a bit at the bottom too, just because I ran out of, it's a little bit taller than four feet. Okay, so there, I've got that. So I'll put these edges on. And, good, and then I cut out, look, I cut out some little tin bits and I'm gonna put that in the corner too, just to fancy it up. It's gonna be so fancy. Okay, so I'll just get this on. Bounce a quarter off the beds I make, huh? Now look, that headboard looks truly mature. Does that not just make you feel sort of superior? And you'll have to get rid of your Star Wars sheets, but you know, there comes a time, I guess, when we all have to just move on, really. So you wanna see how this is bolted on here? See, there's um, the two, there are two or three little slots on the frame there. So you just hold the headboard against that and trace it with a pencil, and then just drill through using a normal old drill and then this is a carriage bolt so it goes through and then there's a washer and a nut and that's what holds the headboard on to the bed and it's really very basic so it looks pretty okay now it's great if you can get tin you, you can usually order it from somewhere even on the internet and you can also pick it up at old uh, flea markets or antique shops up here on my right, April Gregory was working as a dentist and she got a little bored with that and her mom gave her some old tin and she made a birdhouse out of it and she thought that was so cool that she went on to make other folk art pieces like the bird below which has a wing made from tin. And so now she doesn't even work as a dentist anymore. She works as, a, as an artisan, so that's really cool. And then above that on the top is Murray Duncan and Jordan Tabachnik. Now they've been friends since they were 16 and they've 
dabbled in interior design and that sort of thing, but they really hit their stride with tin. And um, they have a planter on top, and then in the middle is a little pocket, which is used for mail or uh, dry flowers on the front door or whatever you want to use it for. But they do a lovely process where they make the tin look old, even though it's not old. And then there's a coat rack beneath that. So, I mean, tin is really cool to work with. So you at least have to try it. If you can't find some old stuff, you can order some new stuff. From, um, from the people that are out there making it. And then you got yourself a headboard. <laughs> One thing with headboards is they squeak. But I guess you're mature enough to handle that. <sighs> a headboard is very easy to build and the resulting maturity is just so undeniable. All your friends will notice but always have a few smart tricks in your pocket so people can still recognize you. <laughs> you may be mature, but you never want to let maturity interfere with having a really good time. <laughs>